Okay, um, my name is Jerome Swanick. I don't know why I had to look at the screen for that, but uh, um, I'm a member of technical staff at Anthropic. I'm in the core engineering team for uh, MCP. Uh, today I'm going to be giving you a bit of a, a bit of a mixed bag of content. It's kind of uh, things that I thought were relevant to this group. Um, I kind of assume you guys are on the frontier. Um, I, I enjoyed Aaron's poll earlier where he asked everyone who's building an MCP server. I'm going to add to that who has already built an MCP server. Okay, who has already built more than three MCP servers? Okay, cool. Who's built unlimited MCP servers? <laughs> like, maybe like, you know, in GitHub repos. Okay, yeah, there we go. Cool, cool. Awesome. Um, that's good to know. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm probably going to go into the details of stuff. Um, I'm going to go a bit fast. I'm not going to use this. Um, but uh, yeah, so things I want to talk about, um, a quick introduction of myself uh, and a bit of the MCP origin story, at least from uh, my perspective. Um, the overview of the last six months, which have been uh, completely wild. Um, what's coming next in the spec and uh, kind of top of mind things for the uh, MCP team. Um, cool, so I already said my name. Um, I'm from New Zealand. Um, my, did someone go wolf? <laughs> There's two of us. Um, uh, so I've got a background in aerospace and rocketry. So before this, I was like blowing stuff up and putting out little fires. Um, uh, this job is like a little more stressful than that, but um, uh, at some point, um, I, uh, I think I played with the GPT-3 API, made a Discord bot, um, talked to it, and then my mind was blown. Uh, I was like, well, the world's changing. Um, it's time to, to leave home and uh, move to the frontier of this and, uh, and make sure we do it right. Um, safe and, and now in the open, which I think is really, really cool with, uh, with MCP. Um, I'm based in London, um, and I've already said I'm on the Anthropic team. Um, so a bit of an origin story, at least from my perspective for MCP. Um, I was trying to solve my own problems, um, as you do as an engineer. I was trying to automate my on-call tasks. So you get paged and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna scroll through the logs, I'm gonna look at this, I'm gonna do that. I'm just like, well, I don't know why I don't just get a report generated by an LLM. Um, so I was hacking away at stuff, uh, trying to, to automate that. Uh, Justin and David uh, shoulder tap me and tell me about this protocol that they want to open source. And I'm like, I'm in. I, I have to do it. I'm MCP pilled uh, out the gate. Um, <clears throat> at Anthropic, there's a bit of a bottom up and top down uh, approach to like uh, projects. And I, I made it my personal mission to make sure uh, MCP uh, came to the world. So I started uh, threading, uh, sorry, uh, spreading MCP through Anthropic with demos, hackathons, tutorials. Um, you can see some of the weirder things that I've done. I've got an MCP server that unlocks my front door. Um, security team wasn't super happy about that, but um, uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, then there's a Factorio uh, sysadmin MCP server that runs Lua on the server, so I get just-in-time um, uh, mods, which is, you know, they're not very good mods, but they, it, it works. I'm, uh, as, as Claude gets smarter, I'm sure that will get good. Um, those those uh, entice uh, engineers, but not really product managers. Um, some Slack emojis, and uh, yeah, um, a big hackathon, SDKs, docs, and launch. Um, and that was the, that was the start. Post-launch, um, we were saying that went surprisingly well received. Um, I think we probably re revised that to like, this is insane. Um, how am I here talking to a, a sold out conference uh, six months after open sourcing this? Um, uh, yeah, mind, mind blowing. There's been a lot of contributions, a lot of really, really cool servers. I mean, we'll see lots today. Um, we're, we're growing the team and we're trying to figure out how to scale um, our efforts um, uh, to, to accommodate the, the large amount of open source contributions. Um, cool. Uh, I'm going to go a bit over the technical work that we've done uh, or the spec changes that have happened uh, over the last six months. Uh, the main focus has been enabling remote MCP, as um, David talked about, auth, which Aaron talked about, um, streamable HTTP as a transport, which was probably the most contentious uh, topic that we discussed, uh, at least internally. Um, and we've got you know, lots of new SDKs, lots of uh, um, awesome contributions to uh, Inspector and other dev tools like that. So um, take a bit of time now to talk about streamable HTTP. I'm trying to get the complement of the, the talks that have happened so far. Um, Streamable HTTP was the replacement for the SSC transport um, without the uh, long-lived connections, which makes scaling harder. Um, 
it, it, it's got this principle of uh, progressive enhancement uh, for M MCP servers. Um, so you know you don't need any of the bells and whistles until you, until you start wanting them. Um, I think that that's the, the, the right approach because we think that uh, there are going to be many more servers than there are clients. Um, so, so pushing complexity in that direction is, is, is the right thing. Um, also, it maintains bidirectionality, bi which like a standard uh, RESTful HTTP interface wouldn't. Um, a lot of people asking why not WebSockets and why not um, just plain RESTful HTTP. Um, I thought it would be good to go over that with, with you folks. Um, kind of our mental model or our key considerations here were uh, bidirectionality is basically necessary for like agentic uh, interactions. I said the word, that's uh, on the bingo card. Um, uh, so yeah, you don't really get the, the interaction model that you would need for like a web of agents, I guess. Um, so we wanted to make sure that that was included in the protocol from the beginning. Um, we wanted to avoid uh, fragmentation. I think ecosystem fragmentation kills protocols. Um, if, you know, the, 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 the value add here is that uh, each client and server works with each other. So we were trying to preserve that property as much as possible. Um, you've got standard IO for local and you've got one transport for network that everyone agrees on. And then people implementing infrastructure can, can translate that to whatever internal thing makes sense for, for their client. Um, Complexity is something that you should minimize. Uh, difficulty of implementation. These are other things that kill protocols. Um, I think they're more important in the, in the early in the adoption curve. I think now we're like quite prolific, so the you know risks to the protocol, uh, like long-term success, might be might be slightly different from from what I'm saying here. But um, yeah, then there's also the general principle of uh, server complexity um, is much worse than client complexity. I'm sorry to the client developers. Um, but I, we, we, like we're high conviction that there will be many, many servers um, and then a, and a handful of really high quality clients. Um, that's at least my bet. Um, I don't know the future. Um, I, talking here was not on my bingo card, um, so I've been wrong before. Um, cool. So what's next? Uh, I kind of wanted to spend a bit of time talking about uh, new things that are coming to the protocol. Um, these are not in the draft, well, I think tool output schema is in the draft, but elicitation is, is, is currently in review. Um, yeah, this might be a bit detailed, but um, I'm kind of trying to give you guys an idea of what interaction patterns are going to be coming in the future, and if you're making servers and clients, what sort of things you might want to uh, be building for. And then, and then a few other topics like fostering uh, the developer ecosystem, um, discoverability, and uh, figuring out governance, um, which I'll talk to in a sec. Um, Cool. So the, the thing that we're working on now is elicitation. Um, it adds a few new primitives to the spec. We've got elicitation request and elicitation result. Um, uh, they've got a JSON schema uh, where a, uh, basically a server can describe, hey, I need this information from the client. Um, and then the client responds with an elicit response uh, with doc content, which is an instance of that JSON schema. Um, why, why have we added this? Um, it enables uh, richer agentic uh, in, um, like kind of interaction models. So uh, for example, you might have a tool request uh, coming from an MCP client that is doing some kind of more complicated task. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like having a uh, book hotel for the example, but that's what I was doing when I made the slides. So, um, and I wished an agent would do it for me. Um, so we have somewhat fuzzy complex task. Um, we have the server being like, oh, I need more information from the client. I've, you know, I've shortlisted these three options. Um, uh, you know, which one is the best, um, hotel A, B, or C? Sends through this uh, your request for more information, um, and then the client could then display uh, some either just-in-time rendered UI or some kind of deterministic UI um, with the options. The user uh, interacts with that, and, and the elicitation request is completed. Uh, and then you end up with uh, a successful tool, uh, tool call, or call tool results, right? Um, that's an example. What does this mean for server builders and uh, client builders? It means uh, server builders can build more uh, complex agentic stuff with more communication between potentially two agents um, or the, a, a sub-agent and a user. Um, for client builders, uh, we start thinking about how, how to like serve these requests. It could be purely conversational. So you could actually have the agent uh, in the MCP client like kind of answer that based on previous context. You could have it 
uh, dynamically generate a UI. Um, but th these, these are uh, in progress, so um, keen for people's thoughts, actually, if, if they've got any experience with stuff like this. Um, cool. Another one, tool output schema. So um, you, when you call a tool, um, it returns like raw content, basically, that gets directly put into the LLM's context. Um, this is a, a slight change here. We're allowing the MCP server to provide structured data that um, the application might have an opinion on how to interact with. Um, the definition of, of, of what that pattern looks like there, but it's effectively just a return type um, specification. Um, why are we doing this? Um, quickly talk, I think uh, Sean alluded to it before, but there is like kind of limitations of, of, of tool use or direct tool use. Um, tool results go straight back into the context window. Context window is like one of your most valuable resources. Um, once that fills up, you know, you have to do some smart stuff to, to figure out how to, how to um, get it back. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's inefficient, it's expensive, and it's not composable. Um, I've got an example here of my claw on call kind of kind of thing where I'm trying to get it to look at through logs and then it just blows up the context window with, with a million logs um, um, and boom, I have to go deal with the incident myself. Um, some solutions to the context problem, you can truncate tool results, you could uh, store long tool results um, outside the context window and have Claude or an LLM of, of your choice um, interact with that like programmatically. Um, I think the more interesting one is calling the tool from a code environment. Um, so structured output kind of allows uh, the model to uh, like know ahead of time how it should write code to interact with this, this tool. Um, this is like, I think, a lot more expressive. It's a lot more composable. It's maybe too early for this, but um, something that I would like people to think about. Um, uh, so in this case, you, you, you call the tool via code, you filter it for important information, and then you return a subset. Um, that's like something that you just couldn't really do without the, the model shuffling stuff in and out of the context beforehand. Um, cool. Um, so what does this mean for uh, server builders and client builders? Um, for server builders, consider, I think, specifically stuff like, um, like logging or like observability stacks. Um, uh, specifying uh, an output, uh, structured output from your tool call will allow you know, uh, an LLM to build a dashboard on the fly uh, easier uh, than, than before. The client builders, um, yeah, sorry, there's more complexity, but um, could, yeah, start thinking about how you might leverage this. Um, uh, I think execution environment uh, is, is probably the right way to go. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to change, change gears a little bit and talk about some, some non-technical stuff. Um, we're trying to foster the uh, developer ecosystem. Um, at the moment, like, we're, uh, we've got a, the, in, the inspector, which is, which is super awesome. We've got a lot of SDKs uh, in, the, in the works. Um, thank you for the contributions. Like Various companies have been involved um, and independent contributors. Um, some things that are uh, in the pipeline, things that I'm personally working on, I'm trying to get uh, example remote MCP servers uh, that are fully open source and have uh, the full feature set that you can play around with. This is great for testing clients. It's also great for inspiration and understanding or pattern matching um, to, to existing servers. Um, the uh, remote MCP client, I want to uh, get an open source uh, client that implements all of these features so you can um, start playing around with richer um, interaction patterns. Um, cool, uh, discoverability, um, the registry uh, is in progress, and I think that's the next talk, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that to them. Um, and then the final topic is governance. Um, this is top of mind for us. Uh, we really want this project to be open and community driven um, and uh, kind of for everyone. So we're trying to figure out how to, to scale ourselves um, without losing the, the ability to move quickly and make decisions um, because the AI space is moving kind of crazy fast. Um, so we're, we're figuring out how to do this. It's, it's something that will happen in the long run, um, you know, us moving governance to uh, uh, like somewhere outside of Anthropic but, um, uh, and, and figuring out a committee of people and, and all, the, all these things for, for, for a larger scale something like a PEP process or things like that. We're, we're really uh, figuring it out now. So if anyone here has experience um, handing over a protocol to like a governing body or understanding how those dynamics work, I am all ears. Um, this is not something I have dealt with before having built rockets um, previously. So um, I did not, yeah, did not expect to be uh, 
solving these problems, but, but here we are, it's, it's super, super awesome. Um, and, I'm, and I'm super happy to be here. So thank you all. Um, I'll be around all day for questions. Um, cool beans.